Welcome back, racers. Tonight on the Midnight List, we're going to be reviewing the Fairlady Z, Z34, or as it's known in the States, the 370Z. This chassis is the sixth generation Fairlady, and it was produced from 2008 until 2021. But the new version, even though it looks different on the surface, is just a modified version of this chassis. So it's still pretty much the same car under the skin. Uh, and it did end up getting a, a more powerful motor. The 370 in Gran Turismo is actually eligible for a engine swap, so we'll be reviewing the factory version as well as the swapped version, which takes its engine from one of the racing GTRs. Uh, it's the GTR 500 that has the, uh, the larger V8 motor. Both the 350Z and the 370Z were sharing a platform with the Nissan Skyline, as it was known in Japan, or in the States, it was referred to as the Infiniti G35 or G37. But the Skyline at this time was separated from the GTR. Although the styling of the Infiniti and the Nissan were fairly different on the interior, uh, the center console was very similar between the two. Speaking of the cluster, the instant fuel mileage gauge does actually work in the game which was a nice touch and it does represent whatever modification is in the car. The factory engine in the car allows for either a supercharger or a turbocharger so I went ahead and tested both and I'm going to show you those side by side. Let's go ahead and see how they did on their lap and then we'll follow it up with the engine swap version. So what we're hearing now is the turbocharged version of the car and uh, in a moment here we'll switch it over to the supercharger so you can hear the difference because it is quite a different sound and that's going to be part of what makes you decide which way you want to go with this build. The cars themselves are very similar in power with the supercharger taking on the power a little bit more steadily and a little bit more uh, quickly so it's a little bit faster on the lap as you'll kind of see as it as it progresses but the downside of that is it's a little bit worse with the fuel economy so you'll have to kind of decide which way you want to go if you want a little bit more power and a little bit more speed or if you want it to be a little bit better on gas and maybe skip a, a pit stop that being said both cars with the five times rates that we're running on fuel and tires got around five laps with the slight edge going to the turbocharged car for fuel economy and they both ran similar tire wear which makes sense because it's the same car with 15% um, wear to the front and about 25% wear to the rear and here you can hear the supercharger which has that more distinct whine which is typical of a supercharger so if you prefer that that may be enough to just sway you in one way or the other the 370Z fully built in its factory form feels very planted and very predictable and uh, it's it's very confidence inspiring if if you start to step it out a little bit it, it doesn't really get out of the control too quick and it's it's just a nice planted car so especially if you're a beginner it's a it's a great way to start off the final laps we ended up running here were a 157.273 for the supercharger and a 158.998 for the turbocharger so again nothing too distinctly different let's go ahead and see what the engine swap version does this car is getting its engine from the gtr gt500 which is a turbocharged v8 it makes the car a little bit more likely to push and it has a slight tendency to oversteer if you get on the throttle too quickly but it doesn't hurt the balance of the car too much it's still just as predictable and the engine swap doesn't ruin the vehicle like some of the other ones do having the fair lady with a racing skyline motor installed actually reminds me of the fair lady 432 which got its engine back in the 70s from the original GTR so it's kind of a nice throwback as well fuel economy was actually better in this car than the one with the factory motor 
even with the car being much quicker. You can probably push to around eight laps, but you're going to wear the tires out a lot quicker as well. So I was getting right around 25% wear in the front tires after three laps and about 40% to the rear. So fuel isn't going to be as much of an issue, but you are probably going to be having to pit for the tires. The car feels a little heavier and a little less willing to turn than the Italia we raced last week, but it actually ended up with a better time, which we'll show you here in, in just a moment. Currently, this is the only chassis that will accept this motor as the engine swap, so if you get one, go ahead and throw it in the car. And they're pretty inexpensive in terms of Gran Turismo money. Looks like we got a 152.102, which puts it in fifth place for the engine swap version, and the factory version is in 11th. So even if you don't have the swap, it's still a nice car to pick up. Leave a comment and let me know what your favorite engine swap is so far in the game. It's pretty hard to compete with that cappuccino with the rotary motor, but this one's still fun as well. Thank you and have a great night.